uh, the winner of this race. So, uh, assuming it's LEH, they will go on to race Headington School A tomorrow. We saw Headington School B get knocked out in the previous race. And the uh, Grange School King's Chester Composite will go on to race Buckingham B&N School USA, one of our international. So we've got some international junior crews over mm -hmm. here. Very exciting. Which is fantastic for them and for us. I mean, it just shows the, the, the international attraction and lure of Henley Women's Regatta that we can attract crews from all over the world um, to just, come and race on this stretch. It's just such a fantastic regatta. It, it grows and grows. I mean, I'm trying to think how long ago it was that I first raced in it. I uh, don't even want to think, 20 years ago. And uh, then, you know, it started off just, just a weekend and has had to spread into the Friday um, for obvious reasons that, you know, any junior rowing is has to wait until Friday evening and yep. Saturdays because they're still at school. Uh, so it kind of limits the spread of the regatta because we're in term time. Um, but they fit it round and all the club, club rowers race, uh, do get some of their heats done on Friday. So we're back up now to the start. We have the um, first heat of the Academic Cox in Intermediate. It's Academic Cox Falls and it's race 129. Durham University on the Berkshire Station and University College Dublin on the Buckinghamshire Station. Uh, Durham in that distinctive purple kit. Uh, currently on the right hand side of that picture. And it's the girls from Ireland on the left hand side of your picture. And I think if you look at the two crews, just basing it purely on the on the back end shot of their technique, it looks like Durham have got out to the better of the two starts, certainly a bit cleaner, a bit smoother through the water. And I think in, in perfect conditions like today, that will pay dividends. As it has for Durham, they are already out to a length. Thanks for that. Just dropped my microphone there. So <laughs> seamlessly, you managed to take over commentary and pick my lapel mic up for me. So yeah, fantastic start. And you can just see actually LEH at the top of your picture. They've dropped that right down now. Um, looking very, very comfortable in the junior eights. And first heat of the Intermedi Intermediate Academic Cox Falls for the Cathy Cruikshank Trophy. These crews had a time trial yesterday. 26 down to 16, but still doesn't, you know, doesn't, hasn't brought these two crews that close together. We've got, you know, in the heats, we've got uh, very speedy Durham University crew. They always produce crews of the highest quality, don't they, Durham? Uh, they've got a almost a conveyor belt of top-end athletes, and it's, it's, it's proving so here. They're already out to two lengths and growing with every stroke, wow. I think. And it's a shame for the girls from Ireland who've come all the way across from University College Dublin um, to test their mettle against the finest that Britain and, and, and indeed further abroad have to offer, but they have come across against superior opposition here as they come past our commentary tower, pretty much at the barrier. I mean, that is clear water and the proverbial mile to Durham already at this stage. You can hear the encouragement of the coach as he comes past on his bike. I think it would, it would take some effort from the girls from Dublin to overcome this, this deficit, even at this early stage of the race. Yeah, it's good collegiate you know, rowing at Durham University on a beautiful, beautiful stretch of river. I, mean, I was just saying earlier, I did learn to scull up there and uh, it's pretty much on a bend with a, rip, with a bridge in the middle, um, kind of almost at right angles, so it's it's uh, certainly a test for scholars and coxes getting through that. Um, so the first side-by-side -side race today for these crews, time trial yesterday. But it's not that side-by-side -side for the Durham University crew. They managed to get right out there. We have a few more results. Tom, do you want to catch us up? Because it looks like Durham, Durham should have this one. Do we have to catch you up on some results? I think we do. Uh, we'll do some club eights. Did you do the club eights earlier? I think it was a win for Tideway Sculler School. We didn't have the last one. We didn't have the last one. Stain, so the last yeah. one was a win for Staines Boat Club over Nottingham and Union by a third of a length in a time of five minutes and 21 seconds. And we've got the two results of the junior eights. Uh, race 127 was a win for the Grange School Kings Chester Composite by a length and a half. And race 128 was a win for Lady Eleanor Hollies on the Berkshire Station over Monkton Coombe. So it's just worth going back to that Club 8 because I noticed that the Tideway Scholars School, who won that, and I said I thought that 5.05, their heat time was pretty fast, and it is. There's uh, the, the, the course record um, 
set in 2010, which was extraordinarily fast condition, so a lot of the course records are set in 2010, is 4.58. Ooh, that is quick. So Tideway Scholars to get 5.05 in today, which is not particularly fast conditions. Um, that's certainly... And in a race that they won by a length as well. And they won, yeah. So, the, you know, not desperately pushed and um, not desperately fast conditions. I think we can look at... I think you said to look out for that Tideway Scholars score. We'll, we'll add... Add that into the mix of looking out for that Tideway Scholar School crew. I think race 130 is now on the course. Uh, second heat of the academic Cox Falls between King's College London on the Berkshire Station and Oxford Brooks, who have had the better of the two starts on the Buckinghamshire Station, just there from the drone shots. The left-hand side of your pitcher, uh, it's the crew from Oxford Brooks, who, ooh, I don't know, perhaps have a third of a length as they swing past Temple Island. Need to watch their steering perhaps a little bit. The crew from Oxford Brooks, they are right over on their station. It's going to get close to this one. I'd say you're right. I think they're getting out there. I mean, anyone can see from the drone shots, but uh, it's going to—it's a bit of a cracker as they're coming down here now, stroke for stroke, side by side, not wanting to let anyone get ahead. Sprint start, and now it's about, you know, who can, who can hold that onto that sprint longest? Who dares hold onto it? There's like this point at a minute in a race and uh, between about 50 seconds and a minute when you really do need to stride it down. But uh, if you can keep pushing on a little bit longer at that point, if you're side by side, you do need to keep pushing it on and it's, your body will be absolutely screaming at you. You need to be able to get into a good rhythm while you've still got the tension of being side by side. And although Oxford Brooks had it um, along by its side of the island, it is the King's College London who've been able to keep it higher a little bit longer, get out to their rhythm. They've grasped the nettle, haven't they, a bit more. They've, they've, they've as you say, as you, as you mentioned there, they've settled a little earlier, and actually they've got into their rhythm, and if you, if you watch the King's College crew, they look to be the more fluid of the two the two boats coming down the course, and it's paying dividends, because they're moving out to almost half a length now. And both crews, you know, in a four, that King's College crew is still up nearly at 38. They're not able to drop it down at all, because it's completely, you know, they've still got so now they've got, it's just a co canvas overlap now. They're so focused, their heads are absolutely forward. They're just listening to their cocks. Game faces. Absolutely game faces. They do look to be the more composed and actually the more, I think, more, more professional of the two crews. I think you're right. There certainly seems to be more of an atmosphere in that boat as opposed to the Brooks crew. Um, but Brooks are hanging on. Yeah, in the, we've got kind of better blade work so you can just see you know there's there's we've got very calm conditions today um so your blade work you know if you've got technically good your blade work should be should be pretty perfect and we've got that happening in the king's college london boat the blades are a level and they're going down into the water whereas in the oxford brooks boat you, you kind of you know people are going for it but the blades are skying up they've got they're kind of diving a bit more into the front of the boat and the blades are coming up and it's just costing them a little bit. It's rocking the boat a little bit. Well, they've, been, um, they've been religiously hugging their station off to Brooks. I mean, their, their blades are, are, are literally millimetres from the boons. I'm not quite sure whether that's a tactic deliberately from the Cox, but it hasn't, hasn't worked at all because King's College now have clear water. And I think, I would say my favourite little phrase of the morning, a margin of control <laughs> over this race, I'd say, with a, probably half a length. Uh, of clear water, it would yeah. take quite an effort from Brooks to come back yeah. now. I mean, there may be something in the coxing, and there's also definitely something in the kind of, as you said, the tech, you know, the, the kind of pro professionalism of the crews, the technique of the crews. Just that we've got a bit more of an advanced crew there. They are, they've kept well away from each other. Um, these, so these are coxed boats. You can see the the head, just the little head of the cox po poking up there. Uh, bow loader boats, as all I think all of these racing boats are. Um, you know, when you start to learn to row, you're much more likely to be coxed by a stern loader so the cox can see you and give you some coaching. But here, this is more aerodynamic, more better for weight distribution. <laughs> the cox is squeezed down into there. They can't see, but they can feel. So they can still coach the boat because um, they, they can do it by feel, for how the, how the boat feels. They also will have um, tucked in their uh, stroke coach, which will tell them the speed and the stroke rate. So well, they didn't panic, did they, King's College? No. When, when Brooks went out to a faster start at the beginning of this race, there was no panic, there was no flustering, just 
pure, pure calm professionalism as we move back towards the start. I think King's College have got that race mm -hmm. pretty much under control, so we'll head back towards race 131, which is on the state boats and indeed has just left the state boats. Imperial College on the Berkshire Station and Bath University A on the Buckinghamshire Station. Looks like Imperial might have had the better of the two starts there. They're almost a bit hesitant there in the Bath crew. It looked a little bit unsure of quite what they were supposed to be doing. It does look like it. I was noticing from the boats yesterday, it was a bit funny that it, it always looked like the crew on the left-hand side managed to get up, and I was I was uh, blindsided a little bit sometimes. Um, I learned to wait a little bit longer before I made a call, but I think you're right. It does look as if Imperial College got the better start. Well, I've been caught out a few times already this morning, trying to predict a race and getting it horribly wrong. So I'm hoping... I, I think that in, in order, because what, you know, what's, what's critical is the length of the course. So in order to have the same length of the course, um, I think that the way the state boats are aligned means that it just looks like that left-hand crew, the um, Berkshire Station crew, um, looks ahead in the first few strokes sometimes when they're not really. But here, I think we can say they were. They're kind of still up at 37, 38. Both crews... In blue, Imperial College moving out quite nicely, quite smoothly. Unhelpful race legend on your screen now, because uh, so we're looking at the drone shot. So we ha we ha this is Imperial College that we are looking at now. Both crews in blue, so not that helpful. But the blue boat, we've got that. Uh, they've got that. Uh, so I see very. Very keen rowing university. Massively well established. Got, you know, got a fantastic boathouse, fantastic setup. I mean, people go to Imperial College when they want to continue their rowing in, in the same way as they, they might go to, to Oxford or Cambridge or uh, Durham, Durham or Bristol. They're, they're, yeah, they're one so, of the stalwarts, yeah. aren't they? And Absolutely. I, I think Imperial have got as strong a women's programme as they do men. Um, particularly in Cox Fours, they seem to have a special affinity with the Cox Four Imperial College. I remember they won the Prince Albert Challenge Cup at Henley Royal Gash in 2013. Um, and I think they've got a particularly strong Cox Four on the men's side this year as well, so look out for them. Um, but certainly at this stage, Imperial have dropped their rate a little bit. They look like they're trying to relax into this one uh, and maintain control. I think certainly they're doing so because Bath look a little Just, bit flustered. Yeah, well, you, you can see this now. We've got a lovely shot above them, and uh, the Imperial crew just has that relaxed. What they're able to do is just push through, and there's the moment when their shoulders go back and their hands come out, that they're just they're able to just to let the boat flow underneath them, and they all are able to do that together. Um, where the Bath crew, with a little bit of that less experience and perhaps, perhaps let, let, less strength, as soon as they finish their stroke, they're back onto the next one. And part of that is because they're behind and you can't relax. But part of what's got the Imperial crew ahead is the ability just to push back and then relax in that moment. I always say with the worrying or sculling, there's these two moments of pause. There's kind of the moment when you put the blades into the water before you push, and the moments when you take the blade out of the water and your hands move away and you let the boat flow under you before you kind of start moving back up the slide. And those are the two moments of that even when you're right up at the top rates, if you can hold those two moments of relaxation and pause, that you let the boat work for you rather than fighting against it. This is why we have you on the team, Alison. Well, perfect, perfect it's a, explication. <laughs> it's been a while. It's been a while. Um, I, I, I can still talk a good game. <laughs> <laughs> Back up to the start. It's race one, three, two, which is the last heat or last quarter final of the academic Cox Fours in this block. And it's Leeds University on the Berkshire Station, and UL, the University of London, in their purple kit on the left-hand side of your picture, the Buckinghamshire Station. Clean starts again from both crews. We haven't, apart from that one uh, Durham crew who managed to crash into the island, we haven't had any real problems at the start from the crew steering. Actually, there's no excuse really here because you've got a Cox, um, and it's UL, and you'll have half a length. So UL, 38 at the end of the island, and uh, both crews actually 38. Um, Leeds University perhaps still at 38, 39. UL, 